<laughs> Hello and welcome to I'm Every Woman TV special Be My Valentine. Um, really happy to bring you the show today live on location um, at Fitzgerald's Pub in the heart of the beaches in Toronto, Ontario. We're here live on the All Talk TV network for I'm Every Woman TV. Now, it's February, and February is a really special month. It's the month of love, relationship, and reconnection. So I want you to be able to apply these principles to yourself so you can love yourself better, you can have improved health, improved relationships, and so on and so forth. That's why I assembled today two very special guests. The first is Julie Ward, who is a reconnection and relationship coach. And she's here to talk to us about a very inspiring topic from rape or trauma to triumph. And it is a triumph. And she's going to talk to us a little bit more about what she does as a reconnection coach and how, how she went through her journey to get to the place that she's at and how we as women can tap into our feminine power, learn to express our heart's desires, say what we want, get what we want, and be with the man, a man who will do anything to love us. So this is quite special and I know it's going to affect your mm -hmm. Valentine's Day. We also have some amazing, amazing giveaways from both guests today and we'll talk a little bit more about that later and how you can claim them. And on the second part of today's show, I am having Igor Klibanov come in, who is uh, a fitness guru and director at Fitness Solutions Plus. He's going to talk to us about the hormone uh, fat, uh, hormone body fat connection. Now, ladies, if you have been struggling to lose weight, even though you're eating right and exercising, this is a a great topic for you that I know you're going to get a lot of uh, out of. And again, Igor has some very special giveaways today, and we'll talk more about that in his segment. But for now, let's welcome Julie Ward. Hey, Julie, how are Hi. you today? Hi, what a wonderful introduction. Thank, Thank you. you. And Thank it is you. a special, it is a special day to be talking about Valentine's and love and opening up. It is. Yeah. Because I think maybe as women, sometimes we're a little bit shy or afraid and we don't know how to open up. But I really would like the viewers to learn a little bit more from you because you have such great insight. Mm -hmm. And I really do want them to be able to apply that to their life so they can have uh, better relationships. Okay. So let's start by going into the past, which is, if, if you don't mind sharing with us your journey of how you got here. I know that you... You had a, 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 you were raped when you were young, and mm -hmm. if you could tell us a little bit about what happened to you, and how that incident changed your life and took you on a, a journey to move forward. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I, I just want to say that <clears throat> it, when I say move forward, I know that you've done a lot of learning. Mm -hmm. That you are an NLP trained pr professional. Yes. You have. Uh, body psychotherapy training. Mm -hmm. You had a corporate career mm -hmm. before you became a coach in the, in the life and relationship area. Um, you were a single mom. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've done a lot of things and you've kind of managed to get yourself all the way through it. So talk, if you will, about the incident and how it helped you to move forward in your life. Well, what I believe, one of the things I believe is that those areas that um, have us closed down, and, and having been traumatized and raped for myself, definitely there was closures in my life because of that. But it's, it's, it's in the opening. It's not so much in being a, walking around being open all the time and, and loving life, but it's in the opening up of ourselves after we've had wounds and closures, that that's where the, our greatest gifts lie. And so I think, um, what I know, not I think, but I know, it, is that my greatest um, ability to help other people is having gone through that, those experiences that I did. And it wasn't just one um, rape. It, I, when I was 14, I was gang raped twice, actually, gang in that same twice. year. Yeah. Wow. In yeah. the same year? Yeah. Or like in a short period of time? Or? Within um, um, three, three months of each other. So and, and it can really you get a little more if you don't mind sharing like how, how did it come about like you were just out doing something what like 
you know, can you share a little bit about the details? I can share a little bit okay. about the details, absolutely. Okay. Because and I want other women to understand if they're going through a trauma or yeah. anything similar, how they, they right. themselves can move forward from right. the experience. And I don't want to put the focus and attention on, on the, the trauma, okay. on the story. We, we live in, a lot of times we find that we live in stories. And that's in the past. That happened like decades, decades ago. You were really young, right? I was, I was 14, 14 years old. Uh -huh. um, so I'm certainly far away from that yeah, in, yes. in age. So I don't want to put the attention and focus there so much, Jeanette, but more about the impacts so that people can see, see the impacts of something like that. So if you're seeing other people in life, you can, you can kind of get a sense about maybe what they've gone through. And then to also look at some of the gifts and the ways of, of opening up and things like that that occurred for me. And this is some of the, the things that I teach other women. Okay, so to begin with, um, when I was 14, I had... Uh, uh, decided with a girlfriend to go to a house party so it was a bit of taboo form you know like you know if my parents had ever found out then I would have been in a lot of trouble so I went to this house party and um, through the evening or whatever there was drinking and smoking and all these other things going on mm -hmm. and I was I ended up locking myself in a bathroom and there was a man a, a young guy maybe I don't know late teens or whatever and he was like insisting that I open the door and he was getting very violent and louder and louder and louder um, and the way that he was um, talking about what he was saying and yelling and everything scared me and I knew I knew what he was up to and I knew what he wanted and everything else like that and the ultimatum that on the other side of the door that particular event was if I didn't open the door he was going to break the door down and he was going to beat the shit out of me excuse my language on air no but that's okay prior to prior to thing. having his way with me so I had a, 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 a choice point at that moment was the lesser of two evils right and at that moment I closed myself down I was like I can get through this I will do whatever I'm gonna just shut down emotionally physically I'm just gonna you know do that and take the lesser of two evils, one without getting brutally beaten up in, in, in advance of being sexually assaulted. So I, had, I opened the door. So that decision was also one of my um, traumas or one of my biggest things that I've had to work through is having to make decisions. So there's a, for me, having opened that door and allowed that door to be open, and allowing that into my life, that trauma that was going to come in. I didn't know when I opened the door that there was actually five of them on the other side. Uh, so yeah. I thought all I had to do was, you know, uh, get through one incident and, and just, you know, shut down and go away. So it was very, uh, you know, traumatizing um, in, in that aspect. So the impact of that, one of them was my decision-making ability. So I, I actually, you know, went back many times and um, relived that experience and would say to myself, am I making the right decision? You know, am I, do I go left, do I go right? So being very indecisive when things that were of significance in my life came about and not trusting myself to make the right decision. So a lot of times suffering back into the past saying, well, what if I hadn't opened the door. Would the door have held? You know, so playing games with myself about things that it wouldn't have made a difference if I had the ability to relive the past because I can't. So right. suffering, so, suffering comes when we're not in the present moment, right here and right now, and we're trying to undo things that have happened in the past and make them different than they are. That's when suffering comes in. So. Now that, you know, you've, you've taken what happened to you, mm. you empowered yourself to move forward. And as I said, you know, you've done, you've accomplished all these other things. Yeah. One of the things that, you know, I, I studied a little bit about what you're doing mm -hmm. with you, on you rather. And, um, you know, the, I, I sense that you have a keen uh, desire to help women capitalize on their femininity and be able to express themselves mm. um, uh like t sexually as well as mm -hmm. emotionally. Right. And so I guess this is a lot about what your process is about. Yeah. And I'm wondering in, in the course of delivering your process through your one-to-one -one and your group coaching programs, mm -hmm. your teleclasses, your workshops, what might be some of the barriers that women face when they're trying to capture sort of their divine feminine self? The barriers that women face, one is, is that um, place of being vulnerable, okay? So not trusting either themselves or other people and putting their walls up. So again, one of the things that I faced 
was after an in incidence like that, we have the ability to want to protect ourselves. And so we, we put up these walls and these facades. Part of the walls are uh, of the protectiveness is being very masculine in our orientation. So the masculine within us, and we have masculine and feminine within us, the masculine within us will be the protector. So if we, we aren't pr protected by um, a, ma a man, per se, but we're pr we have to protect ourselves, it becomes a barrier when it's a mask and a shell that keeps us separated from other people. So the things that, the, the barriers are the thoughts that we think, it's also the facades and the masks that we put up. So if I look at myself when I was back in my 20s, when I was still very um, fresh, even, even you know, a decade after these events occurred to me, at that point, my way of being in the world was very masculine in orientation. So it was very like, I can do anything and I, I can take care of myself. And it was very plotting and planning and I don't need anybody and, and, mm. and these types of things. So those thoughts and those ways of being in the world were what was causing love from coming to me because I was putting up these, these walls and it wasn't really who I was at my core and my feminine. My feminine is very soft and flowy and, and loving and, and, and vulnerable and sensitive. Whereas the masculine is a very, very structured, hard way of being. And it's okay if my masculine comes out to play when it's in service of love. But when it's to provide a barrier, that's when it's, it doesn't serve anymore. It doesn't serve. So one of the things you talk about a lot mm. is being able to have or know what a healthy relationship is mm -hmm. and being able to express your feminine desires to make any man want to be with you. Right. How, how do we go about sort of tapping into that and feeling comfortable expressing our desires? Mm -hmm. Do you have like some tools that you could impart about how to tap into it and get comfortable saying what we want to say? Yeah, absolutely. I just, I just did that. I just exhaled mm -hmm. for one thing. One of the things when we feel like um, closing up or shutting down is we have a tendency to hold tension in our bodies. And the feminine lives in, in the body. She's not up here in the head. The masculine orientation and the thoughts that we think are very masculine in orientation. So for a woman to get in her body, a good practice is through the breath. And on, it's on the exhale that we're letting go and we're softening and gently being in our bodies. And if you can get a felt sense of your breath riding through your body and into your lower abdomen, into your, your womb space, that, that feminine creative uh, place, the stomach is, is, and the womb is very vulnerable. But if you allow your body to really sink in and soften, and sometimes it may take place in your hand on your lower abdomen and breathing in and just relaxing, and then moving and opening up your, your chest and your heart space, so that you're softer in the front and it creates a space of more vulnerability but it also will have someone get in their body and be more relaxed in their own skin and slowing down you know noticing the the diction of speech slowing the speech down mm -hmm. and just being in your own own body is one way that's very attractive to to men as opposed to being like all tense and holding your breath you can't feel fear when you're breathing in and out. But if you're holding it, it causes more anxiety and tension in your body. So when you want to ask for what it, you need, your heart's true desires, mm -hmm. you have to come at it from a soft, uh, comfortable sort of place rather than, you know, a harsh, demanding one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And when you say a harsh or demanding one versus a soft place, there can be a lot of strength in just asking for what you want without being attached to the result. I think part of the feminine, the, the, well I know, part of the feminine is, is, is she, she with a capital S, she, that is all the divine feminine within, in, within all of us, men and women. She desires such strong connection that in order to have a strong ask for what we want, there's a risk. There's a risk. And that's that place of vulnerability, of being able to ask for what you want and possibly face rejection. Because it could be a no that we receive. Mm -hmm. So that would hurt. 
to have your heart open and to be vulnerable and say, hey, you know what? I need, I need this in my life or would you be able to, 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 to provide for me this, whatever this is, is so a place of vulnerability. Okay, so something else I wanted to ask you because I know that you have a program about this mm. um, from business, um, business mom to um, bedroom siren. siren. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I really thought that was interesting because I think, and I really wanted to ask you about this is that um, I think t today yeah. women have a bit of a challenge sometimes between you know wearing two roles and yeah. in the career path and then yeah. and then coming home and being a, a feminine uh, personality so right, that right. so that the man really wants to be with them and take care of them and what have you. Yeah. How do you suggest because you have a corporate background as well. Yeah. How do you suggest that dichotomy balancing it out when to be strong when you need to be and when not. Well, here's the thing, and it's interesting that you say when to be strong and when not. <clears throat> the feminine is probably the most powerful and, and, and strong place, and there's such strength in being vulnerable, for one thing, okay? It's actually not a weakness. I used to have a collapse between being feminine and being weak because of my background. It was like, as a woman, you, you can get hurt. Well, anyone can get hurt. But the transition, so here's the thing, when we have, we, we all have masculine and feminine in us, and a woman out in the corporate world is more in her masculine, because the masculine is a very plotting, planning, task-oriented world, and we are in that mode, even here, you know, having to be, to, to get myself physically here, I had to plot and plan and, and have a list of things to do, be time-bound, get in my car, make sure I showed up. Those are all masculine orientations, and I had to, to be in that in that space and yet when I'm with a partner what I wanted what I want to be is I want to be more in my feminine which means more in the flow and more in the energy of life so there is a transition so it doesn't mean that a woman has to be all femi and flowy all the time it means that she has to make a conscious choice especially in a relationship to be in the feminine role and her man to be in his masculine if that's what they so choose it could be the other way around um, from an essence standpoint where the man is in his feminine and she is more in her masculine that works for them so it doesn't make a difference it's just an ener energetic way but to be together as a couple it means one has to choose feminine and the other has to choose masculine it's all there is to it otherwise there's no zest there's no zing in the relationship it's energy it, it's just like magnets they attract each other so for a woman to transition from being out in corporate and thinking and plotting and planning it could be s things very simply as when she gets in her car or on the go train on the way home where however that is the transition could be listening to things that are feminine. The feminine loves music. So instead of listening to things that are really hard and fast, even though they might feel good, it may be things that are going to slow her down, have her be in her body, have her relax a little bit more and release the tension so that the music can actually move through her and she can relax a little bit and start softening and letting go and just being in that space and being very present and in her body. It may be things like just actually, you know, driving home and softening, doing some breathing and softening, feeling her body and, and softening her, her, the front, of, especially the front and the, the vulnerable place, the heart and the womb space, softening the muscles there feeling herself literally running her hands over her own body and being in her own skin. Um, another question I had just sort of to um, move into another area that you talk about yeah. is um, you, you say that intimate relationships hold the key to our, um, the locked parts of our souls. Mm. What does that mean exactly and how can we learn from that? <sighs> That's a wonderful question. Thanks. That's an awesome question. So intimate relationships, then there's, and um, not to be collapsed with sexual relationships, but an intimate relationship. There's various forms of intimate relationships. And the, I think the primary intimate relationship is the one with the self. Understanding who we are internally is the most intimate relationship we'll ever have. But it's in relationship with other people, like uh, you and I having a relationship or having a partnered relationship with a, um, an intimate partner, somebody that really gets us. 
it's a mirror. We're there to mirror each other, okay? And it's when we're in those types of relationships and mirroring each other that our stuff is going to come up, whether it's a past wound. Our, the whole purpose of relationship is to heal our past. That's my understanding of, of why we're in relationship with each other. And so the people that come into our world, whether it's our, our partner and our, and our most intimate partner, um, they're going to present things that are going to uh, trigger or resonate back to things that are unhealed in our past. And it's then in those moments that we're at choice and are able to then say, ah, that feels like rape, <laughs> or that or feels other trauma, like yeah. other trauma, or it feels like mommy, or it feels like daddy. And that's not what's going on right now. And working our way around that and finding a new transformative way of being in the present moment. So another question that I had, because I just want to try and get everything we can in your sure. segment. Um, if you were coaching, let's say me or any other woman about how to express what I want and actually mm. just ask for it, mm -hmm. um, what would you suggest? Like I frame it as, like how would what's the approach mm. to take to actually <clears throat> ask what I really want, and and that could be a, a few things, right? So a lot of women want things that they don't ask for, mm -hmm. and then they hold it deep inside and they get very resentful. Mm -hmm. because the partner isn't doing it or because yeah. he doesn't know yeah. to do it yeah. or yeah. you know yeah. they expect him maybe to know but he may not have a clue so they have to be prepared to ask yeah and I guess you know if you could kind of walk us through that and, and the reason I bring that up is I actually did an exercise on one of your teleclasses yes with you and uh the exercise you, you had asked us to list all the wrongings of a man <laughs> that we get upset about the and all the, yeah. the loving stuff, right, yeah. that we really wanted. Wronging versus uh, longing yeah. Look exercise. Look at this list. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this list. Um, so one of the things I had uh, down as a wronging, and yeah. I thought we could maybe role play and do a little example sure. of that, of how we could, you know, really ask for what we want. So, for example, one of the things I um, I didn't, I thought was a wronging is that I, w I go out with a man and he mm. didn't, didn't pay. And that mm -hmm. made me angry, mm -hmm. you know, because I want to be treated like a lady. Mm -hmm. So I guess the other side of that is I want to be treated like a lady. I'd like you to pay. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you express something like that? You don't, you just okay. refuse to pay. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So that was one example. So it's, it's about staying in the tension. Okay. okay. And, and it depends. It depends on, um, Honestly, if, if, if uh, you and I, if, if we were to, 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 the bill came, okay, and it's sitting there on the table, it, it's just like, you know, just being in your feminine and just being in your feminine and, and just going, great, noticing it, yeah, and just keep on talking and not being any, any directional with something like that. And he, if, if a man were to say, well, are you going to pay for uh, half of this? And it would be like, um, I wasn't planning on it, you know, <laughs> like, no. Right. So let's try one. So as me. opposed to being directional, the masculine would say, here, you pay for this. Mm -hmm. But it's about holding your own. And I think there's, there's something to be of value. And sometimes there's, there's a book that actually has exercises. It's called Why Men Love Bitches. It's a really great book. Oh, was, yes, I know that book. Yeah, yeah, yes. yes. It was actually... <laughs> <laughs> but I, I yeah. believe the original title was Why Men Love Women with Strong Boundaries. Uh-huh, yeah. And, and it didn't sell, so they changed the name to Bitches, and it, and it sold like hotcakes. Yeah. And that's part of, part of knowing who you are and value, valuing yourself is, is being able to, one, yes, ask for what you want, but at the same time, hold your ground. What I do so know set that the does, boundary. Yeah, yeah. set the boundary. What doesn't work in relationship mm -hmm. is when a, a woman, especially when you're looking for a lover lover type relationship, mm -hmm. if a woman is, is providing the direction all the time with the man saying, honey, do this, honey, do that, he, she's actually, and you notice my hand movement, I'm, I'm, I'm being mm -hmm. directional, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm being, I'm penetrating. Mm -hmm. That's a feminine, that's a masculine orientation. So it's not so much asking directionally. Mm -hmm. um, in some cases, in a lover-lover relationship, but in other times, it's about. It could be as simple as 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 taking, without words, without words, taking the bill, and going and just placing it there. Mm. 
Okay, I'll have to try that sometime. But I wanted to also ask one maybe for the married ladies, mm -hmm. you know, um, not, not one for the singles, one for the married. But yeah. maybe in, a, in like for married ladies, some, a common complaint, which I would assume would be on the wronging list, is that um, the husband isn't doing enough to help her out around the house or with the kids or what have you, and right. she's feeling very, very overwhelmed. Um, so how, how might she approach that and get the husband to take on a bit more duty? Well, first off is uh, men rise to challenges for one thing, and they love being praised as well. So one of the things that a woman can do, definitely, is to, is to praise her man for when he does do things. Okay. So, so honor the, the right stuff. Well, yeah. So if she notices he, um, one time out of the whole week, um, takes the, uh, you know, unloads the dishwasher. Well, to embellish that, she can be very much in her feminine and she can go to her man and, and say, wow, you know, and just give him a hug. And I so love the fact that you, you, you did that and, and just really, really lay it on, lay it on thick. And so he's going to, without telling him, do, you know, you need to do that 10 more times, okay? Without or being sarcastic because a lot being, of women yeah, do that. They sarcastic. get very sarcastic. Exactly. Like, did you ever think of doing that, you know? And I yeah, or you did it once. Great. Now yeah, can you do it the rest it. of the week? So stop the complaining and offer more appreciation and gratitude and, and express that in a bodily way. It could be a hug. It could be a kiss. It could be um, just a real softening and a smile. Okay, we're running out of time, so I've got to get into things very quickly for you. Sure. Number one, the, the how to make a Valentine's Day better for yourself and your mate. One tip. Uh, start off with really getting in your body. And if that means taking a nice long bath and, and putting sensual things around you, candles and, and, uh, and, and things that are going to really make you feel feminine as a woman, um, whether it's soft music, do that. So you create a sense of harmony in your body and a sense of, of relaxation. And then also show a lot of appre appreciation and gratitude. Okay, so oh. for whatever they do, the flowers, the roses, the dinner, whatever they do, be happy with, be grateful for. I think even, yeah, and it makes no difference what that is. Right. Okay, so we've got to get to the promotional end of this. So I want to mention your website yeah. is www.julieward.com. Mm -hmm. The blog is www.julieward. Well, the blog is Julie Connects. Oh, sorry, julieconnects.com. That's the com. blog, yeah. And there's some great tips and info, uh, resources Tons. as well. Tons. So check that out. You have a coming, uh, forthcoming book called As I Go Home, Seven Life Lessons um, to Reclaim Your Life After Rape. Mm -hmm. So when will that be out? That'll be out in the spring. So the, okay, the target so right now is to... now. <laughs> <laughs> and we have three giveaways I want to go over very quickly. So sure. whoever's listening can claim one of three or maybe all if you're lucky. So the first one is take your relationship quiz, which is five ways to unlock your, um, your love, uh, five ways to unlock your love life now. The, the value is priceless. You can claim yeah. that at yeah. Ask Julie. A S K yeah. Julie at julieward.com. Yeah. Yes. We have a four complimentary strategy session mm -hmm. for somebody who wants to work on their relationship, mm -hmm. either even the relationship of yourself. That is worth $150 value. You can claim that also at askjulie.com. And please put in the subject title strategy, strategy session. Right. And the last giveaway, because it's a lot. I've never had a guest with three giveaways before. It's uh, abundance. Uh, <laughs> free audio, a free audio of the uh, Feminine Attraction Secrets. Yes. This will be a good one, ladies, if you mm. need more secrets and help on how to get that man yeah uh so again email ask julie um ask julie at julieward.com put in the uh, subject category feminine attraction secrets mm -hmm. and that is worth 37 dollars. so you've got some great prizes to claim ladies please take advantage of that today yeah. and again it's ask julie at julieward.com uh thank you so much for being with us and sharing mm -hmm. this wonderful information um, we'll be right back, so please stay with us with Igor, uh, <laughs> Igor Klibanov. Uh, I hope I said that right. Um, 
from fitness direct fitness director of the um, fitness solutions um, who's going to talk to us about the hormone body fat connection D mm. don't go away thank you Jeanette very much for having